Welcome to Raptors today. The Raptors are currently gearing up for Montreal, their final preseason game. I'm Savannah Hamilton alongside Paul Jones and Sherman Hamilton. Guys, we talked about the Atlantic Division yesterday. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about the team themselves. Starting with, you know, if you were surprised, uh, sorry, if you were to guess where they're going to be ranked, what would be surprising to you? Because last year they were not supposed to finish fifth in many people's eyes, but they did. Yeah, and, and those eyes were across the other side of the border when you think about it. Those of us who cover the Raptors, we understand how good this team is, regardless of what the pundits may say, because they're not around the team. Now, if we're going to answer this question, I'm going to take it from this perspective. I wouldn't be surprised if they finished anywhere in the East in terms of a top position. But Based on this question, let's say a top three spot would be not a surprise, but it would be eye-opening to a lot of people. And I think overall, this Raptor team could finish top three. Mm -hmm. But in terms of where they're situated, what the goals are for this team outside of the team, I think it would turn a lot of heads if this team finished in the top three. Okay, top three. What do you got? Well, same thing, Savannah. You know, as Sherm said, last year a lot of people didn't even have Toronto in the play-in tournament. Mm -hmm. And here they are with one of those coveted top six spots. Uh, you've got a team that's improved from last year internally and organically, a team that's been together for a year, a coaching staff that understands the players, that's had a chance to work with them over the summer. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, I expect them to be in the top six and be holding a playoff spot for a seven-game series when it's all said and done. But to Sherm's point, yeah, it'll open. that might open some people's eyes south of the border, and I think it, it would be uh, something that you would be expecting. I'd have to say, like, sure, top three, finishing a top of the East, which is possible. Yeah. But that would open people's eyes. Look, this is a really good team, and I think people take them for granted just because they don't have a sexy name, a real sexy name in their lineup like Giannis or Durant or somebody yeah. like that. But this is a solid team that we have, you know, a lot of people have high expectations for. Okay, you guys are going top three. I'm actually going to go top two. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they finished at least third in this one. Top two might be a little bit more jarring for me, but you're right. They don't have maybe the headline names on this roster, but they do have development, and that goes a long way. And in charge of development is, of course, the Raptors coaching staff, so we're going to hear from them now. How has uh, Scotty looked the last few days? You mentioned he's sort of getting back into game shape. Uh, I mean, he's okay. I think I think the test comes tomorrow to see. You know, what, it's always hard to kind of judge what's what's going on in practice. I think he's put in a good couple days of work, and we've today was a little bit lighter. Yesterday we went at it pretty hard, and um, uh, look look good in the mix on a lot of things, more more aggressive and things like that. So, but we'll see. Fred was just sort of talking about like the burden of expectations where people after a rookie of the year season are, are expecting a lot from Scotty and yep. as we always talk about with young players it takes time growth isn't always linear do you have to manage his own expectations in terms of like what his season is going to look like well um I don't know I mean again I think that um I know I kind of keep harping on the same thing. Is he going to play as hard and effort and energy and uh, enthusiasm that he has and it'd be just fine? That is what I'm going to be looking at and managing. That's what I talk to him about. And again, I think, and I think especially, and especially with our team, I think that the, the, um, the way it's, you know, falling out on the stat sheet or whatever is going to change probably fairly dramatically each night and, and understanding that Again, you can have a really good performance, and some night that's going to mean 18 points, and some nights that's going to mean eight points, right? But it still can be a really good performance all around, and and that's you know that's kind of the um, balancing act to keep going throughout you know the course of 82. It's it's a long season. You told us at this time last year you could look at minutes played at the end of the season, and that'll sort of be a determining factor of whether it was a successful year for him. Do you have something? Like that this year, it doesn't have to be a stat, just something that'll sort of show us whether he's taken that next step. I mean, I would stay similar to that. I know it's nothing nothing new and exciting, right? But I would stay still that if his minutes are, are up there, he's going to continue to improve, and that's that's the main thing. If his minutes are up, means he's healthy. If his minutes are up, means he's in shape. If his minutes are up, means he's impacting the game. I'm not, not I think maybe 
maybe uh, maybe a little more lenient last year as far as just getting him minutes was was a high priority. Now it's got to be impactful minutes. You guys were already a pretty egalitarian offense last year in terms of who got the opportunity. Yep. Uh, would you like to see that go even further in that direction? Like I'm talking 82 games, not one specific game. Or is it in a good place? Like how, how do you? Well, I I think Eric. First of all, I really don't know what place it's in right yeah. until the game start, and I think that is always a way of how the team shapes itself each year. And I always say the offense always shapes itself differently with every team and every season. Right, even the things we're running now won't be the things we're running in January. It's just, it's just how it goes. Even the the uh, tremendous amount of summer meetings you have about planning what you're going to add when and how it's going to all filter and seem to seem to not take that much fruition. To be honest, I mean it is. I mean we'll be running stuff probably we've never even thought of before, right? And calling things different things and all that kind of stuff. It happens every season. So. But to get back to your question, I mean, listen, I think there's some guys that are that are hoping to, to get more opportunities and to score more on this team. Well, what does that mean? Are we going to be able to increase our, our, our volume of scoring? Right? Does that mean our total overall is going to go up? I mean, that would be the first goal. Can we yeah. get more possessions? Can we, can we you know, keep certain guys uh, where they're at or bump them up a little and bring other guys along too? Um, instead of doing kind of the addition subtraction yeah. thing, right? So I don't know the answer to that, but it is something that 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 um, it's a very good question. It's something to ponder and think about, and something yeah, to keep an eye it, on for sure. Just because for a top usage guy, Pascal isn't like a high usage guy, is what I'm saying. I'm just wondering yeah. if there's room, if there actually is room to make it more egalitarian, or if it just has to come. Like you say, by winning the yeah, possession no, title I, even more. Yeah, no, I think it. I think there is room, yeah. you know, for that. But again, I don't want to. Uh, I think you know, Pascal's our our best scorer, yeah. right? And he has to be given opportunities and sets and space and all the things that he he's uh, uh, needs to be be that guy, right? And uh, for us to help him as well, right? I mean, he could take his his up a little bit too. I don't think think uh, without a whole lot of like over usage yeah. right yeah. now guys we got to talk about which categories the Raptors could be potentially leading this year last year they were at the top of these categories in terms of offensive rebounding turnovers steal so if you were to predict where they're going to lead this year what would it be Jonesy well I look at the defense and it's something that Nick Nurse has stressed everybody talks about his offensive philosophy and his concepts but he's really stressing defense too and has been and again as we mentioned earlier you've got the same players with another year with the coaching staff, defensive concepts and trust become consolidated after that time together. They turned people over and they scored uh, easy baskets in transition. They were second in the NBA last year in points off turnovers. Yep. That's a category I think they could lead in this year when again, you look at the philosophy with the ball pressure, the way they are in passing lanes, uh, the, the switch ability, how they are just on you uh, constantly with their pressure that's a category that helps their offense as well but it comes from their defense I think it could be points off turnovers okay what do you got well kind of like Jonesy this team has been so good defensively I look at the fact that they create a lot of turnovers as he said and they score off turnovers but the steals they're very good in passing lanes they're very good in terms of creating offensive opportunities how do you lead the league potentially in points off turnovers well, you get some steals. Yep. And I think right now the Raptors, who finished second in that category last season, they have a chance to move up. They're going to be better. They're going to be more together. They're going to be more of an understanding of how to get it done collectively. And I think at the front of their defense, when you talk about guys like Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent Jr., OG Ananobi, you know, when Delano Banton's in there, they've got some length that can get to the passing lanes. And then Pascal Siakam as well. They have the ability to impact offenses by getting out there and making sure that passes are difficult all over the court and that's going to create some real opportunities for them so i look at steals i think that might be a category they might lead the league in all right well you know what they say guys great minds think alike <laughs> because i'm gonna to have to say deflections yeah. um hand you know, in hand right exactly yeah. hand in hand all of, all of them exactly because you know fred van vliet and gary Trent yeah. jr they were two guys individually in those categories so don't be surprised if the whole team rallies to, to top that category this year but now we're going to hear from the team themselves nick uh, mentioned that you, you were dealing with an ankle issue before training camp 
Um, how did it happen? How are you feeling now? Uh, I was just driving to the basket and it, like tweaked a little bit. I was out for a little while, but it was just continually progressing throughout the treatments and strengthening things that we've done in the weight room. So it, it was just getting better. Uh, tweaked it a little bit, but it's fine. Was it the same ankle as last year? No oh, no, 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 no. It was my other one. Um, do you feel like it's back to 100%? Yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels nice. Uh, I can go. I don't really feel any pain. It feels, it feels good. Do you feel like you're physically where you want to be? Nick was saying that you might be playing a little catch-up because that was sort of ramp-up time that you missed before training camp. Uh, I feel like I was, I'd was be pushing myself when I'm on the floor to try to get back in shape. I feel like I'm doing pretty good out there on the floor. I uh, still got to keep trying to push myself every time I'm out there on the floor, try to get better. Um, just keep trying to work on myself every time I'm on the floor. I feel like I'm, I'm getting there still, but we, I'm, I feel like I'm close. Obviously, coming off a rookie of the year season, expectations that people have of you this year are really high. How do you deal with that? Is that something that you embrace? Is that pressure? Is that something you don't even pay attention to? I just go on the floor and try to help us win any, any way possible. I try to have that impact on the floor defensively, offensively try to take what's given to me, just try to play the right way while I'm on the floor. I don't really think about it when I'm on the floor. So I'm just out there playing, trying to do what I can. What are your expectations for yourself this year, like in terms of growth? Is there, like, do, do you have individual goals this year or something that you're? Uh, I would say I do have individual goals, but it's not really something I really focus on that much. Uh, I just try to really, really focus on the team things. Uh, just try to be able to push myself on my down the floor to just Try to be really be aggressive. Uh, try to take a take it to the next level defensively when I'm out there on the floor. Try to make those impacts on different ways. I feel like that that's just we win and the other things come with it. So I really try to focus on winning. So ready for the season, Mister? Yes, can't wait. Uh, just you know, training camp is training camp. It's a good start. You know, it's, uh, once the excitement wears off, it's a little um, dragging, but. Um, We've been able to put together some good days, some good practices, so just ready to officially start. What have you seen from Scotty here over the last few weeks? Nick was telling us the other day that he's sort of trying to get his conditioning back after missing some time before camp. Or are you starting to see some progress there and looking more like himself? Yeah, it'll be fine. I mean, look, it's a long year. Um, I think everybody should uh, manage their expectations anyway. Um, I mean, I said it before last year. I know rookie of the, of the year doesn't really help that situation. You expect another monster jump, but um, just, you know, he'll be fine. He's a, he's a heck of a player. He's a great kid. Um, there'll be ups, there'll be downs, but um, uh, I don't think anybody's worried about Scotty. How do you make sure that he's not getting, you know, people are talking about all-star, you know, 20 points, 25, whatever for him. How do you make sure that he doesn't, you know, underwhelm when people are have such high expectations of him? Or he doesn't get you know overwhelmed by those expectations. Well, he's got to play for his own expectations first. You know, I don't really think he's playing for anybody else's expectations other than his. So um, he's a winning player, and um, I think if we win basketball games, that's all that matters. So whatever you guys have him as being is kind of pointless. You know what I mean? It's got to be up to him who he wants to be. And um, for us, as long as he's doing the things that help contribute to winning, um, I, I don't really care what that looks like. You mentioned last year you went from underrated to overrated really quick. Mm -hmm. How did you deal with that? Just keep working. Just keep working. And I mean, I, I was the opposite, you know what I mean, where I went from like not being good enough to like, oh, he's not that good, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of the opposite for him, um, but he'll be fine. He's, he's, he's mentally strong. He's a little mature for his age. Uh, like I said, a great kid. and. As long as he continues to put the work in, he'll have no choice but to get better, and everything else will kind of weed itself out along the way. The half-court offense last year obviously wasn't the strongest point of this team. When you look at improving that area, is it all internal growth, or are there things that you think can be done different systematically, or you're trying to do systematically, that could aid that? Yeah, I think, I mean, again, you just got to really look at the tape and see, like, you know, if there's no wholesale changes, you know, yeah. it's essentially the same roster, the same five or six or seven will be finishing the games. Yeah. Like, let's look and see where we fail. Let's look and see where we need to be better at. Um, uh, the numbers support how it felt that time, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So we'll continue to grow and get better at that. But um, what we went, 48 games last year, you know, so 
again, like, you got to keep everything in perspective at all times as well. And I don't know if the number one half-court team wins a championship every year, but we certainly can get better in that area. Okay, now, Sharon, I'm going to you with this one first. We talked about the strengths. Let's talk about the weaknesses or areas to improve. What categories do you see in that realm? Well, I think this team is going to be better in terms of three-point shooting. They were 21st in the league last year, and I really think when it comes to becoming a better shooting team, yes, you can do it a couple ways. You can bring some players in, or internally you can develop players to become better shooters. And when you look at this roster, Juancho comes in, and he's a guy who we've seen shoot the ball well over the summertime. But also guys like Scotty Barnes is going to become a better shooter. You know, we're looking at Gary Trent to continue to knock down shots. Precious Achua, we expect to become a better shooter. And he really came on strong towards the end of the season from the three-point line last year. So that internal growth and development breeds accountability and it breeds responsibility. And I think these guys take a big big chunk of that and take it over the summer and work on it and come back and I don't know if everybody was watching last week when we talked about this big board that they have in the practice yeah. facility that is there only to determine how you can become a better shooter I think that's something that this team will really rely on they'll use the statistics from that yeah. they'll continue to get better and they'll continue to develop that level of shooting that they want to get to it takes time yeah but I think it can happen listen that that Noah board oh my goodness oh my goodness how unbelievable is that unbelievable would you guys want that if you guys were still playing listen I, I'm, I'm, I'm easily Love confused <laughs> So paralysis by analysis might be my issue. Okay. We need to break things down I into baby chunks would, for me. It would hold you too accountable. It would, be really, <laughs> it would be really tough for me because it would be really tough for me because the misses would get in my head. Yeah. It would be it's psychologically it's like okay they're always left or they're always right or they're always short. It would be good feedback, but you know you gotta the sword has two edges. It does. Well, it in, does. in all honesty, I think it would be great. I mean, the yeah. amount of information that you're getting yeah. that you can take back, process it, come back later and work on it on your own, information is key, and that thing gives you a ton of information. Absolutely. So then moving on to you, Jonesy, what – what area of improvement do you see the Raptors? Hey, a board man gets paid, right? No, no rebounds, no rings, right? So uh, Raptors were 30th last year in defensive rebounding. But, you know, you have to take that with, I would say, more than a couple grains of salt because we talked about all the things that they were good at on the defensive end. Uh, steals, uh, turning people over, uh, you know, getting in the passing lane, points off turnovers. Sometimes you're not quite in a position to be rebounding. I mean, when you pressure up on somebody and they beat you or they're able to get into a gap, now you've got to rotate. Rotating hurts your defense, but it absolutely kills your rebounding because you are often turning a big guy loose on the board when somebody, another big guy, steps up to help on the driver. So, uh, look, rebounding is a measure of effort. And I think for them, they just got to put a little bit more effort into it. It's not like they're not capable. They are. And Nick Nurse has been stressing some of that in training camp, in, in, in drills, in terms of boxing out, um, you know, peeling back, getting the transition stuff set, crashing the glass and then getting back. So all of that, I think, is going to help improve their rebounding in the end. Hey guys, the much-asked question has been who gets that final roster spot because it's looking like Delano's a lock for one of the two. So that leaves one more left. What do you got? Well, look, there's three guys that you would consider there when you look at the structure of contracts. Uh, DJ Wilson, Josh Jackson, and Justin Champagny. And, and let's go through them. To me, DJ Wilson's a guy that fits the player spectrum for the Raptors, a guy that they would look at long, athletic, switchable, can play on the inside, play on the outside, has great versatility, and he's been around the league a little bit. And then you move to Josh Jackson, the same thing. Here's a guy who was a high pick. I mean, he was a, this guy was a top five pick. It hasn't worked out, and sometimes it's just the place and the time, and you wonder, is this the place and the time for Josh Jackson? Nick, Nick Nurse talked about them bringing him in because of his, his defense and his potential to kind of, you know, get under people's skin and play, be good defensively. And then there's Justin Champagny. And to me, he's a guy that the Raptors have put some time into. They found him, kind of polished him up. Uh, he's been good in the 905 system. So those are three guys that I would look at. And I'm not one that kind of gives up on people. So if you were asking me, uh, with all due respect, they're, 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 they seem like good teammates. We're not in the room, DJ Wilson and Josh Jackson. But I would lean towards the guy that I've kind of invested some time in, in Champagny. Yep. No, that's a good pick. I, I have to go with Justin Champagny as well. But, Sharma, I would love to hear your thoughts on who gets that spot. 
Yeah, well, to me, it's Justin Champagne. I yeah. mean, forget the soliloquies. It's Justin Champagne. Great minds think alike. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and we talk about the investment, but you also talk about the opportunity to capitalize on the investment. This young man, if he continues to improve, continues to get these opportunities, as we've seen with previous players that the Raptors have invested in, that they've played them in the G League, brought them up, they've been able to include them in deals that have helped this team get better. So that investment isn't done, I yes. feel, and I wouldn't be surprised if they kept them for that reason. And also, and I said this before, he has a knack for being around the ball. Yeah. And it's like a, a, a instinctual thing that he has, and that's something that you want to build on. Yes, he's a bit undersized for his position, but with this positionless basketball, he can fit. And he can hit a corner three, and I think that – it's time for them to actually give him that opportunity and say, this is it, and we're going to see where you end up. He's good in the locker room, too. Like yeah. You just look at him with the other guys, Savin. I know you saw that with 905. He's 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 fun loving. He yep. keeps people loose. He's great for your locker room. I was gonna say he has the right amount of that energy in the locker room, but then also pride on the court. Yep. It translates because sometimes they could be the nicest guy. It doesn't translate to the court. Other times, you know, you they're they're not the nicest guy, but they're a great player. Right. He has the mix of both. When Armani got signed last year, um, you he his his play spoke louder than anything else on the court with the 905 he dropped like over 40 points a few games in a row in the g league so you could tell he took it personally potentially <laughs> but um guys this is actually one of my last shows i know on, i know a second go ahead let it's her, let her your, say it, her it's thing. your last show let but it's also say your let birthday her say her thing. right it's also your birthday. It is my birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Savannah. I appreciate you guys. Okay, for the record, Sherm is not my dad, <laughs> uncle, brother, nothing. but Not we, related at all. We're somehow family. We are, we're, down the we're line some way. Here. But we're not done here, oh. Savannah. We're not done. <laughs> We got a little something for you. No way. Oh, we got a little something for Yo, you. guys. You, you, you Look at that. Look okay, at that. It's happy birthday on it. Look at that. Oh, you guys, listen. You can't get me around Hey, it's a, it's a big budget Adel. here at Raptors yeah, today. It is. It's a big budget. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. Happy birthday. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. I appreciate yeah, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. But honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure hosting this show with you guys. I've learned so much from both of you, as well as our viewers, of course, because you guys are very consistent, let me tell you that. <laughs> but um, honestly, um, thank you for everything, and to our producer, Jake, as well, for putting in all the work behind the scenes. And with that being said, the Raptors play their last preseason game at 7.30 in Montreal. They'll be playing against the Celtics, and you can catch that at TS on TSN. From myself, Savannah Hamilton, Paul Jones, Sherman Hamilton, Jake, Evan, and Danny, thank you for watching Raptors Today.